Alright, hello there and welcome to this first tutorial on hopefully a long-lasting asset tutorial series. In this first tutorial, I'll show you how to set up a basic tiling ground texture, and there are mainly two ways on how this can be achieved. One would be to hand paint the texture, and the other would be to bake it out from existing geometry. Now since preschool children probably paint better than me, <laughs> Um, I will show you the way of creating 3D geometry and then baking that out onto a texture to be used as a tileable texture. First of all, what do we need for this tutorial? You will need the latest version of Blender, as well as XNormal and Jim. Throughout this tutorial, I'll show you how to use this software and the specific settings. Alright, so before we start the tutorial, there's something I need to show you uh, considering modular parts. When dealing with modular parts or modular objects, it's always important to change the origin, so the where it actually gets scaled around. Now for normal objects, you would just leave it at the middle, as this way you can scale it from all the edges at once. For modular parts, it's quite important that they are only scaled um, from one axis or from one side, because when you scale an object from the middle, it will lose um, its scale from both sides at once, so it will lose about one unit on each side, so you have little control on how we want to scale it. If you move the origin now to one of the corners of the object, it will actually only scale from one side, so we can define way more accurately on how we want to scale it. Accuracy is a very important aspect of modular parts, as you want all of them to fit together, and later, when we tile this texture, we don't want seams or anything that makes it obvious that this texture is not the real geometry. So we need to plan ahead and set up some rules and yeah, specify the ways we want to move the objects together so that there are no seams or no space in between our objects. And for that reason we will also activate the snapping tool. You can do so by clicking the little magnet at the bottom or holding shift and tap to activate the snap tool, which will let us move our objects according to the grid. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is create a plane for scale reference. You can think of this plane as um, a 1024 by 1024 texture, or other sizes, but they should equal the same length and height in size. So that's the rule of the power of 2, which basically just means that your textures should always be squares and not rectangles, because this way it loads faster and it should fit into the binary code to process faster. So meaning you should start by 128 by 128, 256 by 256, 512 by 512, 1024 by 1024, and multipliers of that. So always keep that in mind when creating game assets and game textures, as this will speed up the loading process. Now as we've activated the snapping tool, we will use the grid size of Blender to scale our single blocks of our texture. For that reason, we need to check out how many of these squares fit into our plane. And that's exactly 20 for each length and width. Now obviously, you can do the math, and dependent on how many tiles you want to fit into this square, you need to change the size of those single um, blocks that we will use. For this uh, little tutorial, I thought of a you know, size of 4 units, which means you can fit five of the tiles into the square. That's quite large and will obviously tile quite... Um, it will obviously be easy to spot that it's tiling. So if you really want to create uh, good textures that are hard to spot on tiling, you should go way smaller and put in way more effort and detail. But due to time constraints, I don't want to uh, yeah, make it too detailed and let you watch me uh, create thousands of these little stones and that would be quite boring so this is more about understanding the basics so for this purpose I will use a unit size of 4 per um, stone we can then also to vary it a bit because it would be quite boring if we would just use square stones um, because this would then be a kind of the basic kitchen tile floor which isn't really yeah, the purpose of this tutorial as we're more aiming at dungeons so I created a tile that's double the size, so it's 8 in width, and half the size, so it's 2 in width. And with only these three tiles, we can already create a large number of different patterns. So you can use these three 
and align them how you like it and change their position and rotate them until you really like the pattern and from there on you can work your way through sculpting and baking which we will do right now. So before we actually start to sculpt we need to prepare our just created blocks so that it's um, easier for us to sculpt later on and we don't have to do these steps on all the blocks that we duplicate. So you should do these steps before laying out your basic pattern. First of all, you should go to edit mode and subdivide the object twice. Then you should set the shading mode to smooth. Add a subsurf modifier by hitting control and the number you'd like to subdivide it. So since we're going to duplicate this quite much, a number of two or three would be enough here. Then you need to apply this modifier. And lastly, add a multi-resolution modifier, which is mainly the same as the subsurf, but it's especially optimized for sculpting. All of the previous steps are there to help our sculpting, increase the geometry so we can get more detailed, and also to speed up the process. Lastly, you should apply the scale of the object as well. If you don't do this, the sculpting will yeah, make weird geometry, so you even get a warning if the uh, object scale is not applied when switching to sculpt mode. So if you mind all those steps, you can then start to lay out your basic pattern of your ground texture. Now this you can do by free imagination and how you like it most, or you could Google for some reference for ground textures. I won't uh, add any here now because I don't want to add art that I have no permission to show, but there are plenty of uh, yeah, tolerable ground textures that you can get inspiration from. In this video, I've just created um, a tolerable ground textures where all the bricks stay inside the square, the reference square. Obviously, you can also create tolerable textures where there are overlapping uh, yeah, bricks and the seams are less visible. But since this is sort of the beginning part and the beginner's uh, tutorial for this sort of technique, I will keep it simple. So maybe I'll create another tutorial and show you the advanced method of decreasing the visible seams later. So after we've laid out the basic pattern of our ground texture, we can then start to sculpt all the single bricks. If you are as lazy as me and you only want to try this out and don't really want to create a texture yet, but only follow this tutorial, you could also just create three sculpts and then yeah, use those to kind of lay out the pattern and bake it out to check if it works before you actually sculpt all of those th single blocks. So for the sculpt settings, I will discuss those in more depth in a rock creation tutorial or rocks or stones or bricks. Um, but just to show you in this quick tutorial as this is needed right here, you will need to set the brush type to scrape and peak, set the brush curve to a hard brush, activate trimming, or just trim, lock the area plane, so it gives us flat edges, and activate full strength. In this uh, preview video, I've just used the mouse. You could also use your tablet if you own one. But since I made this tutorial for everyone and not just people with a tablet, I've used the mouse to showcase how this might work with a mouse as well. So now I'm just quickly going through all those tiles and scraping off the edges to make them look a little bit worn since this was, yeah, kind of going for a dungeon theme. And you obviously could go way more into detail and use all those tools of sculpting, which I won't do now for the sake of this tutorial, but certainly will do in yeah, a more in-depth sculpting tutorial later. And it's not only for the sake of the speed of this tutorial, but also due to my laziness that I'm not, yeah, kind of elaborating further on how to sculpt stones right here. Um, again, this is only to show you the method of baking out these, um, yeah, these modular stones to create tellable textures. So yeah, after you're done sculpting and you're happy with the result, you need to apply all those modifiers, as else the uh, scale or the reference plane will also get the modifier once we join all of this. And if you've applied all the modifiers, you can select all of the uh, bricks or stones as well as the ground plane that we will use as sort of the, yeah, the ground, the background, the dirt that gets rendered. And select all of those. Select with shift right click one of them in the middle and hit control J to join them. 
Now in this case, the whole origin moved, which means if we reset the um, location of this object, it won't be at the middle of those coordinates of the origin of the coordinates anymore. For that reason, I created a new plane on top, which we will reuse then later as the yellow poly bottle in a way. And I've gone to edit mode, um, turn off the snap tool, this grid tool, and move the whole object so it aligns with this plane again and is centered around the middle exactly. And this is very important. If we export things, that's also part of my um, how to export models from Blender to Space Engineers. If you export models, they should always be at the origin of this whole 3D world, so in the middle of everything. So after you've joined all of this and realigned its origin, you should again change the shading mode to soft, so the ground plane that we used for scaling also has the sh soft shader, so we don't get artifacts when baking. And then you duplicate this main base layer that we just created around all the edges, so that when we bake out the occlusion map, the ambient occlusion, there will also be occlusion from the right sides. Now it's not necessary to copy the whole thing, we could also just copy the last row, so we have um, yeah, one row extended, um, so one, one row further than the scale reference we used, but for the sake of saving time I've just copied all of this. So after you've then created this monster of high poly, uh, bricks, you can join all of them and again check that it's aligned to the middle, so set the origin to the middle of the whole thing and then basically you are ready to export it. Now for using this model in XNormal we can just export it to OBJ and when exporting we just need to set the settings selection only, so we only get the selected objects and we don't need to write the materials as we don't need any materials in xnormals so it won't create the mtl file which would just be a waste. And after that we create our low poly model in a way that we bake onto which will just be the basic plane we created in the beginning. You need to unwrap that so it has something to bake on and can export it the very same way just give it a different name that you can yeah find again. Also make sure that it's at the very center of the origin so that it aligns perfectly with our tiled texture. So now we are already ready to go into XNormal. Now in my um, overview on normal maps I told you that XNormal is specifically useful for being used with cages. In this case we don't need a cage as we will bake onto a flat mesh since our low poly model is just a flat plane. Um, XNormal <laughs> looks like it comes out of the 90s and you might Download, have downloaded it already and right away click the X because you thought this old thing won't do anything. But that's actually wrong. It's very very powerful for especially our use and I've, yeah, I kind of feel like it bakes way better than um, the Blender internal bake thingy. So we will use that for now. Don't let yourself get uh, un unconfident with this look of the program. Now due to its very user-friendly GUI that is very obvious and easy to understand, no, stop joking about that. So it's easier to use than it looks like. We just need to go to the low poly section on the right and drag and drop our low poly OBJ model in there. The same for the high poly model, just go to the high poly mesh tab and drag and drop the high poly model in there. Then we can go to baking, just select the normal map and check if you like the settings at the top, select the right output folder and give it a name. Also check the image size you like as, again, keep in mind the multipliers I've told you before were you're kind of minded here, you can't even select anything else. After you've finished baking the normal map, you can also go and bake an ambient occlusion map. This usually takes way more time than the normal map as it yeah, kind of calculates with rays and shoots more and more rays and there are a lot of settings you can change but I'm quite happy with the basic settings. And this AO map is perfect for texturing later. XNormal has a lot more options and a lot more maps it can bake and we will use some others as well, but in later tutorials. And after I've baked out on the normal map and the ambient occlusion map, I went to cgtextures.com 
a site where you can get great uh, textures for free, but you should probably already know that. I will just pick um, a rock texture, a smooth rock texture, that doesn't have too much detail as we don't want the ground texture to be too busy. And yeah, just pick one. And we don't need a tallable texture, we will make it tallable on our own because we have yeah, the ambient occlusion at the borders of our texture, you won't see those seams anyway. So after we've chosen the texture, we can just import the ambient occlusion map into GIMP and import the texture as well. And then make the texture tileable by going to Filters, Map, Make Seamless. After that, we can overlay the ambient occlusion map on top of the texture and set the blend mode to multiply so only the black parts will be added to the diffuse texture. If we would export this now as the diffuse texture, this would be quite boring in the um, engine or in Blender or in whatever engine you want to use it, as there is no a kind of value change in those bricks. They all look like they are made from exactly the same stone and that's kind of uncommon. So I created a new layer and painted a bit of black Again, I've sped this up, so I didn't want to waste too much time texturing this, as I'll probably make much more tutorials on texturing, and this one is more about how to bake out the normal map. So I've kind of made um, some black spots here and there, and then overlaid this by reducing the opacity, so we have more variety in the texture itself. After exporting the diffuse texture now, I've deleted this black uh, layer again, so I could create this back map. For the spec map, I just desaturated this whole yeah, texture uh, layer and adjusted the levels so that the darker parts stay dark and the lighter parts have less uh, specularity. Now, this is a technique very commonly used and in future tutorials, I will elaborate further on how to create spec maps. For this, it's only important to know that you can adjust the levels very easily to create great spec maps and yeah, increase the visual quality of your assets by a lot. Right, and after I've created all of those textures, I've just added them on a plane in Blender and added a few lights and set up all those yeah, textures the right way. So set up the specular, specular map to only affect the specularity and the normal map to only affect the normals. And then I've duplicated all of those planes to see if it tells good. And as you can see, it tells perfectly. Alright, so that's already it for the first basic tutorial on how to create these yeah, kind of tallable textures. I know this is very quick and probably not very detailed, but since I only wanted to show you the basic methods of baking out this texture and how, what to keep in mind when making modular um, objects, that you need to set the right unit scales and then yeah, kind of move them according to the pattern you like and then you can export it and then bake it. Um, yeah, that was kind of the goal I would like to achieve in this tutorial. And later I will make a tutorial on more in-depth uh, methods on creating these ground textures, so less visible seams and more detailed texturing tutorials and more detailed sculpting. So I hope it was very insightful to you, and as always, if you have suggestions or questions, just ask, and I'm glad to help you. Thanks for watching.